In this video, I want to help you understand the difference between a data warehouse and a data lake. I see these terms being used interchangeably all the time. And as it turns out, they're not really the same thing. And in fact, I think they're quite different. And I'll show you why, and I'll show you which one I think is typically the best option for most companies. Hi there, my name is Ruben, and I'm a professional treasure hunter. Uh, I think as, as I like to see it, and I go into companies and I help them find those hidden gems, those hidden insights that could help them drive growth, reduce costs, or just help them be a better company and deliver a better product. And I do this through data, decision making, and in this video, I wanna help you understand one of the most common things that comes up all the time, which is, should we use a data warehouse or should we use a data lake? So very similar, this space is sometimes fooled a little bit with hype, maybe not the right kind of approach. Uh, so I'm gonna break them down, show you the pros and cons of each, show you how I think about these two options and what I typically recommend to my clients. So a data warehouse and a data lake are different to me in one key aspect. There's maybe some technical detail specs that sometimes get brought out, but I use one major differentiator and to me, this is what makes all the difference. A data warehouse is a place where you can store structure insights. That is, the data itself is already structure. Uh, if you think about it from a, a very simple perspective, like, a, like an Excel spreadsheet, columns and rows, it already has a clear structure and the structure makes sense. So based on the structure, you could easily visualize it and then find insights. You could find you know, the top percent customers, you can find the attributes from where your customers come from when it comes to marketing campaigns. You could understand the retention, how long customers stay with you. All this kind of insights, they can come because the data is already structured. It makes sense, it's logical. A data lake, on the other hand, is typically used for unstructured data. So this might be, let's say, user-generated content. You know, you have all these images and videos that users upload to your website. The data is there and maybe there's interesting attributes about the type of content, how long it is, is it images or videos, is it positive or negative, if you run some kind of sentiment analysis. But the point of it is that it's really on structure. So there's possibilities, lots of things you could do, but you need to find a way to clean it up, to add some structure to it, or to add some kind of model that would structure it. So this one difference changes the approach. As you can imagine, the data warehouse with structured data might be a little faster to get going. You know, you can sort of set it up, figuring out insights from your data very quickly. This could be minutes, hours, maybe days. Versus a data lake, it's more of a, we're gonna store this because we think it's important and maybe one day we'll get to it. And maybe we won't. That's the thing, right? It's unstructured data. Who knows what that what that might actually look like? Now, you know, we've seen uh, a few things in the news recently. You know, Snowflake went public with the IPO. Uh, the IPO was successful uh, by most measures, and they are just another player in this space of a data warehouse, data lake. Of course, Amazon with Redshift, Google BigQuery, and there's a few other ones. So there's a lot of movement in this space because companies have a lot of data, right? And that data is increasing, and they need a place to store it. But how they store it? makes a difference. So to me, when I work with companies, by default, I, I tend to lean quite heavily in, into uh, a data warehouse because I think it's a much more practical option. It's something that an executive team can look at and say, you know what, I get it. You know, we set this up, we paid the bill, you know, whatever the bill was, we went through all the effort, and now we know there's five insights about our customers and the products and we can use that. The unstructured data, to me, uh, comes a little later. And I actually have this uh, maturity scale or assessment I, I like to use for companies. And maybe you've seen other ones like the descriptive and prescriptive and anyway, there's, there's a lot of things. But I think companies really should just think about three time zones, the past, the present, the future. Now I'll dive a little bit of that into here on my laptop. So I wanna show you that and how I think about that. But keep that in mind, data warehouse, structured data, data lake, unstructured data. One is very easy to get going. Another one has potential, but it's unclear what that might look like. Let me talk about this idea of this time zones of data, uh, which is how I think about maturity in a company. You know, when a company tells me, tell me where we are right now and where we could be going, I say, you know what? Let's look at the time zones. So we have, let me see if I can draw here. So we're gonna see some real time drawing. You know, we basically have three time zones in which we can think about, right? We have the past, we have uh, the present, and we have the future. 
Now, I don't know about you, but these are the three time zones in which I can typically think about uh, when working with companies. Perhaps you know uh, a fourth dimension. Uh, if you do, share it in the comments. I'd love to hear that. So in the past, we understand what happened. You know, we're looking at historical performance, last quarter, last year. To me, this is where uh, we have a lot of data uh, analysis here, right? To me, it's what data analysis is, analyzing the past. In the present, we want to understand what's going on. Uh, to me, this is more what something like BI, you know, business intelligence, real-time data might look like. It tells us what's going on right now, what's going on in the campaign, what tweaks should we, should we make next week. And then in the future, to me, this is the role of the world of data science, right? In the future, we want to predict what might happen. So as a maturity scale, you know, things don't really happen as clearly. You know, you might be in the past and the present initially. You might be, uh, you know, doing a little bit of future work. But as a company, I want to say, you know what? We're going to prioritize. We, we want to get the past and the present right first, because if we don't understand the past and we don't know what's going on in the present, it's going to be really hard to predict the future. Now, in our topic, a data warehouse can play a role in all three, so it's not completely uh, separate, but I do think it plays a bigger role, you know, in this, in the past and the present. And in the data lake, typically plays a much bigger role in the future, right? Because it's unstructured data, uh, we want to understand what's going on, but maybe the most valuable use case of all this unstructured data is to predict the future. So very simple model, very simple assessment. Uh, I find it much more easier to get into this and understand you know, what we do really well in the past. We don't really know what's going on in the present. We don't have real-time data. We don't have uh, metrics that we can look at and we, we don't look at the future or whatever your combination might be for your company. Your next question might be, okay, I get it. I know what I need. I need a data warehouse or I need a data lake. What choice should I make? Should I go with AWS, Google, Snowflake? This is my, my stance. I think technology is straightforward. There's a handful of choices. In this space, there's probably three or four big ones, some which I mentioned. Uh, and don't break your head. General guidelines when working with clients. If you're already heavily invested in any ecosystem, you probably want to stay there. If you already use AWS for other things like S3 and EC2 and email and uh, identity, add in Redshift as a natural step up. Just do that. If you're doing the same in the Google ecosystem, just do that. Uh, and if you don't, then you can make a choice. I also like to use what I call the assumption scoring. And so when you get down to two or three choices, you get to build this table and you can see the image right now on the screen. Uh, and the table just simply has the two or three choices, price in, how the pricing changes over time. It has the features that you care about. So you might say, you know what? I needed to integrate with this other uh, technologies I have. I need it to be easy. I need to have scalable pricing. I need it to be secure, whatever it may be, whatever the things you care about, you have them and then you can rank them. You, you give each one a priority, you know, some are your must have, some are nice to have, and then you rank your choices on them. And at the end you get a score. And the, the one with the highest score is the best fit. And you realize that most technologies aren't perfect. They're not the perfect score, it's not hundred percent, but it's good enough and it's the closest. So I would use that uh, when making technology choices. And as a even bigger thing here, just make a choice. You know, this is not a let's explore for 12 months, debate, and then make a choice. This is really something that you can do in a few weeks. Just make a choice, move on. Uh, because really the hard thing is many things that come after the choice. The storing of the data, the capturing it, the figuring out how to analyze it, getting into people's hands. There's way tougher challenges. So you really need to make this technology choice and move on. So that is all I have for today. Uh, if you enjoy this, make sure to hit the subscribe button, the like button. You know that YouTube uh, algorithm loves to see those things. I make uh, videos on a weekly basis or every two weeks, I think it is right now and move into a weekly basis, let's say that. So look out for a few other things coming out. There's also a link in the description to my weekly newsletter. Uh, I call it the growth needle and it's a fantastic place to just get some of the same ideas uh, in written format. Some of the events I'm doing like uh, webinars and so on are listed there. And there's some things that only go out to this newsletter. So check that out. Uh, I think you'll find it helpful. And let me know in the comments, uh, have you have been approaching the data warehouse data lake question? Love to hear your thoughts. And I think the people watching this video will also love to hear that. Until next time, talk soon.